I'm going to talk about the Lombard logging tractor. My guess is many of you know about them, probably seen one up in Maine somewhere. Um, I didn't know a lot about them, but I, you know, kept, uh, I had sort of a interest in building one for a while. And originally I was going to build, I think we talked about it before, um, th that, um, that Ma oh, Model, Model Tech Studios, yes, Model Tech Studios has one in S scale, which is, I think, pretty crude. Um, but my goal was initially to kind of build just a sort of generic, sort of looks like a Lombard. And the more I did research into it and the more I found out about it, um, can you all see that? Not yet. Uh, oh, wait, I don't know what I need to do, sorry. Um, you do this. Uh, let me see what I'm doing here. Share screen. That one. Share. There you go. It's coming. All right. Good. Um, so the more I kind of looked into it, um, the more I got really sort of interested in making it as accurate as possible, but not going to a huge amount of work to do it. So this is the story of building a Lombard logging tractor in 148th ish scale. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, are you seeing all these images of everybody in the, on the side of the screen or are you just? Yeah. Okay, let me see if yeah. I can. No, we're that's not. Up to, not. Yeah, that's up to us. You can yeah. Oh, that's, oh, okay, that's Yeah, up we, to, can, okay, we that's control fine. that. So, okay. good. That's good. Um, all right. Well, so here's the guy. This is Alvin O. Lombard, born in 1856, died in 1937, um, native of Waterville, Maine. Uh, and in fact, there is his house still standing. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Needs a coat of paint, probably, but it's, I mean, it's a nice big house. And I, you know, I don't know a lot about him, except he was an inventor, a tinkerer, and everything else. Uh, and in 1901, he got a patent, the first of several patents for his Lombard steam log hauler, uh, which was obviously a way to log out areas where there was, no, you know, it just didn't make any sense or didn't pay to build a logging railroad. Um, there are two of these, I think, um, in running order today, and they have um, tractor tires on the front instead of the skids because they use them in the summer, but obviously this was designed to be used in the winter time um, on, on, on skid roads and that kind of thing. Um, he sold about 85 of these, something like that. Uh, and like I said, there are two or maybe three in working order today. And there are some others in, in different pieces uh, here and there in various states of repair or disrepair. Uh, and, you know, some of the specifications, you know, it's a pretty good size machine, 30 feet long overall, um, nine feet tall, could haul a lot of stuff, again, not on dirt, but on, on really iced, uh, you know, iced snow. And apparently train lengths could exceed 1650 feet, which is a lot of, I mean, considering they're not on rails, uh, it really is a, a, um, pretty long log train, um, manufactured 1917 to 28. And then he started building some gas powered ones, uh, which I'll talk about later. And one of my favorite stats about this speed, five miles an hour, no brakes, right? Uh, there are absolutely no brakes on this thing, which is just fascinating considering how heavy and how long these log trains were. And some images, some of these you may have seen before um, of Lombards and the various modifications and how they were used. It basically looked like a switch engine. Yeah, it, it, it basically is, a, it's, a, it's a saddle tank locomotive with, uh, with um, uh, basically tank treads. Oh, that's another interesting thing. Uh, I hadn't known this, but apparently the tanks that they used in World War I, um, they were so primitive that they could maybe make a mile or at most two miles before they started throwing their treads. So they were, they were very limited in how far they can go. 
And one of the um, real successes of the Lombard was that it could go from mile after mile after mile with, with the treads intact. Um, it was just a real advancement, apparently. It was, was something quite remarkable. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it looks very similar to a saddle tank um, locomotive. Uh, and of course, you see on the right, the steering wheel. Hmm. Uh, and that's how these things were steered, right? The, 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 um, the uh, crawler part of it was fixed to the frame. It, it couldn't pivot. Uh, so it pivoted basically on, the, on turning the front skids. Uh, and obviously, there's no hydraulic anything, no power steering, nothing. It's just it's sheer muscle power. Uh, and it worked on kind of a, a, a ratchet and pinion system um, to, to um, kind of horse that thing around to, to steer. Um, here is a Lombard with a what, five car, five skid train. And you'll notice in a lot of these pictures too, I mean, obviously we're talking whether it's Maine or some other part of the country, this is winter time, you know, 20, 30, 40 below zero. Um, a lot of the uh, lumber companies that use these would sort of cobble together some kind of a shed or shanty or cover or something to give the person uh, up front. And, and you know, if behind that case, there's the same steering mechanism. Uh, to give them a little bit of shelter and protection. Uh, here are two Lombards. Another one here. And, and again, you can see just the extraordinary variety uh, of, of um, shelters that they're putting on the front of these. But the basic mechanism is really pretty standard. So let's see, Al, you sat in the front, exposed, and there was no brakes. Mm -hmm. And the guy near the fire is an enclosed, you know, shoveling whatever, I assume wood to keep the wood. fire going, is uh, in an enclosed. <laughs> uh, so clearly yeah. there was a pecking order that you, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't want to be steering. You wanted to be uh, in the back, I would think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're lucky, you get, you get a... Um... Uh, a little enclosure like mm -hmm. this. And, it, and it's probably not too bad as long as you're out of the wind. Because mm -hmm. remember, the, the back of the enclosure fits over the smoke box. So there's some heat that's oh. going to come out that way. So that helps a little bit. Um, this is obviously a pose shot. I doubt that, that you know, <laughs> this nice young lady ever actually uh, steered a Lombard. But uh, here's you, you can see the guy in the front, right? I mean, he's, he's all muffled up and everything. He's got leggings on and so forth. He picked somebody off. And this, and yes, just so we're clear on this, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, he just looks miserable. I mean, it's, it just, it his absolutely looks miserable. Uh, you notice the steering wheel is covered with ice. Um, Looks like his gloves are covered with ice, too. Yeah, they're probably covered with ice. Well, see, you know, I am a firm believer in personal individual accountability, right? And I can guarantee you that these things, they're notoriously hard to steer, very difficult to steer. Um, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to wind up running into a tree. And who's the person who's going to be held most and immediately accountable for that, right? Uh, is the guy sitting right in front there. Uh, and I don't know that there were any fatalities involving Lombards, but it would not be surprising to me at all. Uh, this is, by the way, a pretty good um, view of, of the kind of gearing mechanism here uh, and the way it connects to the, the front axle or whatever it is that, that um, uh, moves the, the, uh, the skids. They dumped the ash there? The, what's that? They dumped the ash there underneath? Um, they, they may, yeah, they may have, they, uh, it, it, it's possible. Yeah. So it's a chain drive out. It is a chain drive. Yeah. There, there's a, it's a, like a, um, a, a sprocket system that is geared to, uh, you can see it's almost like a, um, almost like a little donkey engine thing here. Um, yeah. and then it drives, the the um 
that's like a cam here that drives the wheel. That is connected. You can sort of see it here. There is actually a pair of sort of inner wheels that I believe were housed in casings. Um, and that was basically your differential. And then it was connected to a um, sprocket here and then a chain drive that in turn was connected to the, um, the back side of the tread mechanism there. Yeah, if you look at the tread in the back on the inside edge of the tread, you can see like little uh, fingers sticking out. Like they were probably there to hold the track from coming off side to side. Yeah, that would be my guess. Like that's probably why they de they derailed because you probably just bent those things off and if it, if it, if it was like positive drive like each side was going the same and he turned it one side's going more than the other something's got to give yeah I I don't know what kind of problems they have I mean people said they were extraordinarily robust and reliable that they rarely broke down. Um, so I, you know, again, I, I don't know how, but, but um, they, it seemed like they, they were really pretty reliable machines. So Lombards in action. Uh, this is, and, and Tom Horman um, uh, pointed this site out to me. There's a really great uh, website uh, from the Maine Forest and Logging Museum. And they have a lot of resources, including photos, plans, everything from Lombards and a couple of videos. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to get off of this. Uh, I'm going to go back here. Um, let me see. New share. I think it's that one. Yes. Is it that one? This one, okay. So this is, as it says, can you see the video, the YouTube? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is Crystal, New Hampshire, Quite a contraption. Thank <laughs> God. Got a point. They're fearless standing next to it. So, uh, are you going to be able to make yours operational and drive around your layout like that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a challenge. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs>
hey, Al, were they going down a switchback? Uh, I don't know if they were or not, honestly. Because it, it looked, looked like, like, the, the, like the, that they brought it around from the back side, right? And then they may have hooked into yeah. it. Hey, a little bit of radio control. It can be done. Yeah, with one of those batteries and. People don't run dead rail all the time on Osco. You could do no rail. Yeah, just put some <laughs> zero in the front. That steering wheel mechanism, it looked like it had two sets of gears on it. Yeah, it does, yeah. I was wondering if one of them was to somehow or other affect the the uh, treads and the way they like a, some kind of manual differential or something. As far as I know, there was no way to adjust the treads at all, just the front skids. Yeah. It's relied on snow, I guess. Yeah, the one photo you show clearly, there's two chains going to each tread. So. Like somebody said, uh, this positive traction, you're, you just have to skid around the corners. Wow. Very nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That was it, great, it, Al. That's incredible, really. So we should be back to the PowerPoint. Is that what you're seeing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As far as the the operating one, I thought about that and I just decided, you know, I got too many other things to do yeah. to even try that. But there is a guy who built, and the guy is a machinist. He's he's brilliant craftsman. I can't remember his name, but he built a one twelfth scale, one inch to the foot, live steam Lombard, um, operating Lombard. Uh, it's a magnificent, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but I don't, I mean, I'm certainly not going to tackle a live steam version, but I don't even want to try one to make it operating. So anyway, so you got to start with plans, right? And the, uh, the, this main forest and logging museum, they have uh, oodles of plans, uh, including the original patent drawings, um, which are, you know, again, you got to be careful about these. You, you look at the tread mechanism, you notice that on the patent drawings, the sprocket and chain are on the outside of the treads, not the inside. Yeah. And I can only assume that they realized that was extraordinarily dangerous for anybody who's nearby and they change it to an inside uh, drive system. So th this, you know, the, the concept is exactly there, but the, this is not a 100% accurate drawing of an actual Lombard. Um, there are plans here and I printed these out and I tried, there's some dimensions on there, but I printed them out and I thought, okay, these are pretty close to O scale, uh, at least enough to work with and I can maybe scale them up or scale them down as I need to um, once I decide what kind of like pieces I'm gonna use. Because remember, I don't want to, th this is not designed to be a huge involved scratch building project. This is designed to be a, what do they call it? Scratch bashing, right? Where you, you, um, you basically take components and put things together and, and so on. Uh, it became less scratch bashing and more scratch building as I went along. But anyway, we'll see. So, so that, that explains how I got from the uh, kind of strayed from the 148th actual, uh, you know, scale. Uh, here's another image. Um, and this is the primary one I worked with. This is, you know, measured from an actual Lombard. Uh, and you can see again, the uh, sprocket and chain mechanisms on the inside of the treads now, but it's, it's really pretty. Um, I made what was probably a rookie mistake. I made a number of mistakes on this, but it kind of turned out okay anyway. Uh, is that um, it said 30 feet long? Okay, 
fine. So I put a scale, an, an O scale ruler on the, the drawing, this drawing that I printed out, uh, and it measured just about exactly 30 feet. It's like, oh, well, that's good. Uh, and But what I did was I measured from the front of the smoke box to the back of the cab, instead of from the very front edge, the leading edge of the skid, to the very back edge of the, um, um, which I'm gonna call it the coal bunker. Well, not coal, it's wood, the wood bunker back there. Um, so I'm like, so that was an error of mine. But what reinforced that was when I started buying pieces and components that would would work. Uh, and as I started to build it, I just, you know, one of the, the fun challenges of this was like finding all the pieces and things I, I wanted to use without going to a lot of extra work. So I browsed around Shapeways and came up with this thing. Uh, and the, the drawing is a little bit disingenuous because you don't get the whole thing. What you get is the cab and fuel bunker assembly uh, and it's the, the two halves of the saddle tank. And I'm like kind of measuring this out and I thought, you know, that could work. Uh, so I bought that and I don't know if I have an actual picture of that. No, I don't, not there. But I laid the saddle, when, I, when it came in the mail, I laid the saddle tank assembly uh, and cab assembly out from you know, the front of the saddle tank here to the back of the cab on the scale plans. And it was bang on accurate. I mean, it was maybe off by a couple of scale inches. That was it. And like, this is it. I've, I'm, I'm set now. So that became the basis of this. Um, so the next step was then to marry the cab assembly to the sort of boiler firebox smoke box thing, which is just a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, so just cut a PVC pipe to the right length, glued it to the cab, done. Um, next step was to add the, um, the two halves, the saddle tank. And again, it's, it really is two halves. There's, there, it doesn't have the top part with it. So I figured, okay, that's easy enough to put in. Uh, you can see the three styrene formers there to match the shape of, of the, um, the tank to carry it forward. Uh, another mistake I made, I should have used two more, uh, two intermediate ones, because if you look closely at the uh, finished locomotive, there's a bit of a sag uh, in the top of the kind of boiler and, and smoke box, firebox area, which is, I don't think it's that noticeable, but I could have prevented that by adding just two more of those formers, uh, especially given how thin I had to, the thinness of the styrene I had to use to bend around that curve. So it's starting to take shape, starting to look sort of like maybe something looks like a locomotive. And at this point, you know, if I had said to people, I'm building a railroad locomotive, they would have said, yeah, sure, absolutely. It looks just like one um, until you get start getting the treads on. Um, oh, wait a minute. That's sorry. I went to the end. Back up. Uh, and there is the um, styrene, couple layers of, I guess I used aught 10 or something, styrene curved around to complete the um, uh, top of the saddle tank. And then the usual putty that goes in and smooth it down, sand it off and all that, to try to fill in the, the cracks and the gaps and everything. Uh, you can see I've drilled a hole. It's actually an oval um, for the... Um, uh, the pin at the bottom of the stack. And you, I'll, I'll show you in a minute why I, I did the oval instead of just drilling a, a, a regular circular hole. Another view. And again, you can sort of see the oval rather than a, a round hole uh, where the uh, stack is gonna go in at the very front of the smoke box. Um, sprayed it with some primer and of course, you know, there's nothing like spraying it with gray primer to see all the gaps and imperfections. So back to the putty and everything to try to smooth it out. Um, again, you can see that kind of oval hole there. Um, 
now the stack is in and what you see is not the PVC pipe on the right or front side where the smoke box is. That's a piece of thin wall aluminum tubing, um, which I just got off of Amazon. It slid right over the outside the PVC pipe. And the reason I did it that way was because I bought uh, a, a cast brass cast brass smoke box front um, to, to stick in there uh, that had a you know kind of a flange around it and it was designed for a very thin smoke box front not something thick like the PVC pipe so I had to get uh, the thin wall aluminum tubing cut it a little bit longer than the exposed portion of the smoke box um, so it had that that little lip around it to allow the smoke box front to go in uh, and then what I did was I drilled a perfectly circular hole uh, in the top uh, or, or just in the thin wall tubing um, and then all in one step uh, put some glue in to glue the uh, stack to the thin wall tubing and then the thin wall tubing uh, then into the, uh, well, the thin wall tubing slid in, then the stack went in, and because the, uh, I had cut the oval hole in, this, in the uh, PVC pipe, it was very easy to maneuver the um, um, stack around to get it perfectly vertical uh, and exactly in line. And that's what it looks like from the front. You can see the thin wall tubing sticking out. Um, from the uh, front of the PVC. Uh, and then it's on to the sort of mechanism. I hunted around again, this is just sort of playing around on the internet, looking at stuff on eBay, looking at old catalogs and saying, what can I use? And so I found on eBay, a couple of these uh, Crow River products, single cylinder steam engine. And I said, this kind of looks exactly like, um, you know, or bits of it look kind of exactly like what they would have used um, on the Lombard. So it comes in a bunch of pieces like this, right? Um, you put it together, just made a simple frame um, out of, I don't know, eighth inch square styrene, something like that. Assembled it all. Added the, I'm assuming these are like drain lines to drain out the condensation from the bottom of the cylinders. The PVC pipe has nothing to do with this, obviously. It's just a stand. To, let me take the picture. But. And again, you know, it's good to be lucky. <laughs> so I just, you know, I, I looked and I put this up and, you know, again, this is O scale. This is O scale product. And I put it up against the um, drawings, the Lombard, and that fits perfectly too, right? Just like the um, cab and, and the uh, saddle tank. Excellent. And so then it goes in. And it's just a couple of screws. I just used a couple of long screws, drove them right into the PVC, uh, which allowed me to adjust it and get it, you know, perfectly horizontal and then just uh, uh, um, correct side to side to make sure there was no yawing or anything in it. And then this is, this is where I do most of my modeling, sit there, watch TV, do some modeling. And Lindsay, the dog, is pretty bored with all this. She's, you know, just kind of hanging out, but wondering what I'm doing. Uh, then we go to the um, supports that basically tie the chassis, the front of the chassis to the smoke box front. Um, just a couple of pieces of brass uh, tubing, um, sort of half annealed. Um, I, I don't, you know, put them in the flame, but not till they turn orange, because when they do it, then, then it gets kind of too soft 
to hold its shape, but I sort of halfway anneal them and just uh, basically, I think I just crimped them down with needle nose pliers or something and glue them into place. Um, there's uh, the, the support bracket, the, the vertical support bracket is behind it, uh, made out of just brass um, angle stock, uh, which is also annealed and bent into shape. And then the uh, steam line, I guess, it's a, yeah, it's a steam line there, uh, is basically just a piece of um, whatever gauge electrical wire with part of the insulation stripped off and some of the insulation remaining um, uh, to, to form the, the kind of lagging on it. And you can see the elbow there in the, in the um, copper wire, there's gonna be a um, shut off valve there at some point. And this is a view of the other side. So I'm looking at this, right? This is a, this is the steam dome, and I'm thinking, what, you know, this is an odd steam dome. It's kind of flattened at the top and everything, um, and I'm looking through my parts box, and I've got a pretty good selection of stuff down in the basement, sort of squirreled away. I find nothing. I'm looking online. I'm looking through catalogs. I ordered a bunch of stuff, trying to find I got all these fluted domes, flange domes, rounded domes, and I just couldn't make find anything that um, seemed to even remotely resemble what they use in the Lombard. And so, you know, you got to kind of think laterally about these things. Just sort of scrounge around, find things wherever you can. Uh, and so, does anybody want to guess what I used? For, for the steam dome? PVC? PVC plate? PVC? Yeah. No. Copper? No. No? Medicine tube. Okay. Medicine bottle. Very close. The cap off a tube of chapstick. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, whatever works. Yeah, whatever works. And there it is. All right. Just sanded it down to match the curve of the, um, you know, the, the top of the saddle tank, and it goes. Um, then we're moving on to the treads, and Shapeways has this, it's a beautiful model. Um, they have it in HO, S, and O scale. Uh, 1915 vintage 45 horsepower crawler. Uh, and of course, the only part I cared about were, were the treads, not the I mean, I felt bad ripping it apart because the, the um, whoever did this did a beautiful job on it, but you know, needs must. Um, so I, I didn't actually cut the treads off. I just basically ground down a bunch of the, you know, all the stuff, the engine, the radiator, the fuel tank, all that went. And I made just a crude sort of box out of styrene to sort of box it in. And in it goes. And now it's clearly not a steam locomotive. It's starting to look a little bit like a Lombard. Uh, and then gears. And, you know, this is just stuff. Um, the, the ones on the bottom, um, which I mostly used, are for some kind of, like, you know, mechanical experimental toy, you know, kind of a rector set sort of thing. And the ones on top are, they sell them for, you know, steampunk. They, the steampunk people use them to decorate their costumes and things. And, you know, this is not stuff that would be usable for like fine scale working models, but for the stuff I'm using, it's, it's absolutely fine. And it's cheap. It's just get it all ordered off of eBay, got all sorts of things. And you just use the gears, cut them down. I mean, it's, it, it's a, this is as far as I could see was as close to the way the prototype arrangement worked. And then the axle assembly, again, scrounge around. And I had this old uh, Weissman model services kit for a Model T 
And I'm looking at this and you know, the front axle assembly looks like a Model T axle. And for all I know it was, I mean, I don't know where Lombard got all his components. He may have used Model T components for some of this stuff, but it looked just like a Model T axle. Uh, and that's exactly what's in there. So the front axle of Model T, um, you know, fabricated some parts on the front, the pin assembly and so on uh, it, to, um, you know, wh where the, the, the whole axle assembly pivots. Um, then it's on to rivets. These are archer rivets. Um, wonderful things, right? They're just, you know, um, decals with little dots of resin on them. Uh, and they're superb. The companies now announced they're going out of business. So if you need Archer rivets, buy them now because I don't know if anybody's gonna pick up the product line, uh, but just add the Archer rivets and it's very simple. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's like, oh man, you're kidding me, right? I've, uh, I've got some O and o H O uh, from Micromark that aren't too bad. They're not as finely as done as the Archer, but. Yeah, buy them. They're still selling. Yeah. They said we're selling out our remaining stock, so buy it mm -hmm. now. Like everything else that we use, from precision scale to yeah. uh, Grant Line to you know uh, Northwest Short Line. I mean, all I mean, they're just going down one after the other. Um, okay, so the front skids. Uh, these are just um, I hand carved them out of wood. Um, fabricated all the metal work associated with them and, and i'll show you some of that i mean it's just pretty the, the stuff on the top is pretty basic it's just brass strip bent around uh there's a brass um um the this the um you know called bearing as i guess it is it's a piece of brass tube soldered in little bits and pieces of of uh you know there's there's a wear strip uh uh iron wear strip on the bottom that I just made out of an index card, some MBWs, that kind of thing. Making some of the components. Uh, the only way to make components like these if you're soldering them is to use extra long pieces. So this is just a piece of brass strip stock, two pieces of, of brass tubing soldered together, uh, and then trim the brass tubing down to the length you want it. Uh, and then cut off the um, brass bar stock the length you want it, and you wind up with uh, a fitting like this. And you can do the same thing with these axle mounts here. Um, it's almost impossible to solder when you, you can't make the parts and then solder them. You have to solder the component or, or, or the actual stock together and then trim it down to length using a Dremel tool very carefully, right? Because if you use the Dremel too much, then it heats the part and desolders it, which is not a good idea, so. Now it's starting to come together. The um, front, um, just sort of test fitting, because it's not painted yet, but test fitting the skids on. You can see they're test fitting because they got them backwards, right? You can see the, on the rear, on the top rear of the skid, is a little sort of, um, um, I don't know what you call it, a, a um, reinforcement plate or something that, that obviously should be on the front, not the back. But again, these are just test fitting. Now they're the right, right way around. Coat of paint going on. What kind of paint? <clears throat> um, Tamaya Rubber Black, right out of a rattle can. Uh, rubber Black is the closest I've come to finding a good base color for it. It's just enough um, sort of off, you know, it, it's just enough different than black to give the impression of a little bit of weathering, a little bit of fading. So that is my, for anything to any, anything, any steam locomotive, anything like that, that Tamaya rubber black is, is my go-to paint. Oh, um, you look at this and you say, um, maybe that's kind of a bad paint job. It looks a little grainy. 
Yeah, but it's not the paint job. It's the um, 3D printing, right? You all know with 3D printing that it, it can be kind of grained or steppy. Uh, and I looked at this when I got the parts and I thought I could very carefully sand down each of those panels to get rid of the grain or, or the, 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 the spackling or whatever it is um, without sanding off the rivet detail. And I thought, you know, I'm just not going to worry about it. By the time it's painted and weathered and when it's seen from a normal viewing distance, it's probably not going to be noticeable. So I didn't. But, you know, if you wanted to do this really, really right, you would very carefully sand down all of that or else just sand it down completely and redo the rivets. I mean, that, that's a possibility too. Um, the builder's plate on the front, builder's plate slash number plate. Um, th this was not the number uh, assigned to it by the logging company. This was the, the construction number. So this was the 38th Lombard built. Um, this was thing taken at the Maine Forestry Museum, not by me, uh, was something I got off the internet. Um, but you can see sitting in front, I should have showed you the original photo. Um, this looks distorted and there's a reason for that. Um, but what's on front, the front there on the, um, which is actually the seat where, where the, um, the steering guy, whatever you want to call him, would sit, uh, is that one twelfth scale live steam model of, of the Lombard which I said, there's, there's a whole series of, of, it's like a Facebook post on it. It's a marvelous thing. Um, so, you know, what I want this photo for, obviously, is the builder's plate. And I'm looking for color photos, because again, there are lots of photos of the surviving Lombards, and trying to find a square on shot of the front of the locomotive, uh, or of the Lombard, rather. Uh, and I'm finding all sorts of photos taken at angles, the sides, the back, and the top, the bottom. I found one great shot of a Lombard dead center, but there were these two huge hulking guys sitting on the seat box, completely obscuring the builder's plate. I found another one where there was nobody sitting on the, uh, you know, taken right from the front and with nobody on the seat box but it was some kind of holiday celebration. They dressed it up with a big Christmas wreath that obscured the builder's plate. I'm like, oh, for heaven's sakes. And I finally found a photo that was sort of close to center on. Uh, and what you see here is the process of squaring the image, uh, which you can do in Photoshop, right? You can take, a, and people do this all the time when they're taking, when they wanna uh, draw plans for a building, and they take, you know, they have photos of a building taken at an angle. You can square up the building. But as you might guess, it is really, really, really difficult to square a circular object because there's no, you know, fixed plane of reference. So I just played around with images, printed them out, you know, different things. And I finally got the, sort of the one on the right is about the closest I got. Uh, to a photoshopped adjusted square on image. And it's not that big, right? It's about a foot across in, in O scale. And onto the smoke box front, it goes done, right? It's close enough. Making other little parts. These are the brackets that support the um, the uh, wood bunker at the back. And again, more of the. Uh, there's no way I could have done this realistically without archer rivets. I mean, I guess I could have gotten brass strip, and I could have gotten a riveter from Northwest Short Line. It is, but really, come on. Um, parts like these. These are the um, supports that are for the side slats for the. Um, um, wood box and the pieces of the, of the wood box. Is that real wood? Or that is it, real wood. Yep, that's, that is I like real the way wood. you weathered it. Nice. Yeah, it's basically your standard alcohol India ink wash. It's grained, right, with a razor right. saw, drag a razor saw, alcohol India ink wash. 
there, you know, there are some people who can make plastic or styrene look exactly like wood. I'm not one of them. Sam Swanson. Uh, you make yeah, Sam Swanson. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I can count on the fingers of one hand, the times I've used anything other than wood to represent mm -hmm. wood. I mean, a, a painted is different, right? I'll use right. styrene for painted, but for, but for raw wood, I just, okay. Uh, so the, the, the sides of the bunker are in place, there's some weathering going in there. No, the whistle is in, um, the wood, uh, the wood load is real wood. I went out and cut some wood, um, very carefully. Uh, split it with a chopper uh, into little pieces, baked it in the oven. That's why it's on the foil, right? Because you don't want the nasty critters that live out in the woods to get into your layout. Um, and so the wood is, is there. Uh, now, here's where I fess up about the scale. So I told you that I had those plans. I measured them wrong. I got the Shapeways um, HO scale cab and smoke box or, or, or um, a saddle tank assembly that fit perfectly um, on the plans. I got the Crow River Model Works O-scale um, steam engine components that fit perfectly on the plans. Uh, the uh, O-scale uh, tractor thing that I showed you from Shapeways when I cut it apart and, and uh, widened the treads a little bit. It fit perfectly on the plans. I mean, this was like meant to be. But somewhere along the way, I started looking at it and measuring it and setting up O scale figures, you know, people next to it and said, this doesn't look right. And then I'm looking at the plans again. I'm finally realizing the 30 feet actually is the entire length from the very front of the skid to the very back of the fuel bunker. Um, and then I'm starting to measure it again, looking at the dimensions that I, that I, that I know are, and I realize I have not built a 148 scale model. I've built a model that is somewhere around 138 scale. And I thought, do I really want to start over? And I thought, if I did, what are my options? Now, the shapeways parts that I mentioned are available in S scale. So I could have gotten the crawler tractor in S scale, the cabin saddle tank and S scale, but that would have produced a model that was somewhere around maybe 155th scale, in other words, too small. Um, and so the only way using the kind, it would not have been possible, in other words, to make a true 148 scale model uh, of a Lombard using the techniques and parts that I had. And so, you know what I thought in the end was, I'm not, I don't care. I wanted to build, I'm real, I, I don't, I wanted to build a Lombard and I built a Lombard and I can still use it. Right. Because the whole point of having a Lombard was you didn't have a railroad. So it's not like I'm going to park this thing next to number 16 or number 24. This is never going to happen. Uh, it's going to be by definition in a separate part of the layout and I can easily transition and have some scenery or whatever. So the Lombard scene is not anywhere visibly near the, um, the actual ON2 oh, stuff. Did, didn't, isn't it actually a quote fact that they had a Mark II model that was 50% bigger than their Mark I? <laughs> That's probably what I ended up modeling. There we exactly. go. There you yeah, go. There you you go. got it right. There's there no accident. Go. Yeah. Um, but in any case, so the last thing I had to worry about it's was- Beautiful you know, model, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. The, the last thing I had to worry about was, you know, the, the figures, right? Because none of my O-scale guys would work. Um, so, um, you know, I'm sure you're all aware that some of the best modeling out there is, is not done by model railroaders. It's done by military modelers. Mm -hmm. um, the stuff that they build is just is the weathering, the painting, the detail is phenomenal. Uh, and a lot of them work in 135th scale. So mm -hmm. I managed to, to buy and, and um, these are mini art. And the quality is superb. They're styrene. You have to glue them together. Yeah, you have to do a little bit of, of you know, filling work with, with body, with putty. Um, but um, um they're really beautifully uh, engineered and beautifully detailed and somewhat hard to get, right? Because mini art is based in Kiev in Ukraine. 
Um, so it's a little hard to get stuff out of there right now for obvious reasons. Um, but I, I, you know, picked up some of these on eBay, put them together, painted them. And so now I've got the Lombard, I've got the, um, the figures and I built a little diorama. And so the end result basically is this. That's, awesome. That's fantastic. All right. That's really gorgeous. Yeah. So, yeah, the figures, the trees, um, the, the snow is woodland scenics, mostly woodland scenic snow, um, covered, mixed uh, about a three to one ratio, maybe it's a four to one ratio with um, white glitter, which you just got off of eBay. You know, they sell glitter in all these colors, white translucent glitter or something to get more sparkle to it. Um, the river or the pond or whatever it is there, I, I don't know if it turned out the way I wanted it to or not, but uh, what I ended up doing was I had, there, there's certain sections of my layout where, you know, the track is very close to the edge. And for safety's sake, um, I have um, like uh, pieces of eighth inch uh, Lexan that I use. And the, the, the company that cut them for me they come with a uh, sort of a, a bright blue backing on each side to, to keep them from scratching. So what I did was I peeled the backing off of one side of the Lexan and threw it away. I peeled the backing off the other side of the, of the Lexan and just brushed on a coat of very light gray paint. And then put the, laid the um, plastic back on the paint. So there's a like Lexan paint and then the black sheathing, or I'm sorry, the, the blue sheathing, uh, let it dry for a few days. Uh, and then I carved some cracks in, in the other side, right? The, the top side, and then sprayed it with, it's, it's like a, uh, it's like a chalk finish. I, I got it like Lowe's or something that people use for decorating furniture, you know, making like a chalky finish on furniture. So that's where the, um, um, that, and again, I'm not, I don't know if it turned out okay. I, you can sort of see like bubbles and things in the ice, but, 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 you know, it's, a, it's an experiment. It's a work in progress. Um, this is the black and white version. I don't think the ice would be all that smooth up there anyway. No. Yeah, probably not. So. And snow on it, all sorts of stuff. It's gorgeous. That's frozen to the wheel, huh? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I think you ought to give the guy in front a cab to work from. Yeah. So yeah, I, I thought about. Yeah, I probably will build one. I, I um, <clears throat> just you know, removable cab or something. Even be one of the ways versions. Well, this is nice. You're really, really well done. Al, um, can I take you back to your maker's plate? Um, I assume that that's trim. Oh, you don't have to go back there. That's fine. Uh, okay. You have. That's okay. Uh, I'm assuming that that's actually trimmed from your your corrected photograph. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. And glued to a very thin piece of styrene and, and glued on. Yeah. Yep. 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 It craves being photo etched in a little bit of brass. Yeah, I thought about. Um, getting in touch with the narrow planet people. I don't know if you're familiar with narrow planet, mm. but they're a company in the UK that does etched brass, number plates, name plates, builders plates, phenomenal stuff. So I may, I may actually get in touch with them and say, you know, can you do something for me and, and um, um, <laughs> replace it. But again, my, my logic was it's pretty much hidden behind the guy who's sitting on the front there. Like that. I mean, you, yeah. you, you kind of don't even see it, right? Because he's, he's just sitting there. So how far away from the edge of the, of the layout is this going to be? Or have you gotten that far yet? 
I haven't gotten that far. Yeah, okay. This is That's just uh, basically, a, I don't know, it's like 18 inches by two feet or something. Mm. I don't know how big the this. Yeah. I just built it on a piece of gator foam. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how how it plays in, you know, how it fits into the layout itself. And then, you know, if that's not enough, if I get really ambitious, there's obviously the gasoline <laughs> Lombard, right? There's this thing, which is a fuel tanker Lombard, gasoline powered. I mean, it's just, you know, a bizarre looking thing. This, which looks like it was, I mean, it is a gasoline Lombard, but heavily modified. Um, you'll often see this with, you know, a label like Lombard. It's not a Lombard, it's a Phoenix. Um, and it looks like, I mean, it, it's a Shea, basically, is what it is. Um, but it's a Phoenix log hauler. So it's obviously the same principle, but a somewhat different design. So it should be easy enough to cobble together. Oh, it, I guess it's not really like a Shea because it has, it has cylinders and gears on both sides, not just one. Uh, it's, it's symmetrical the way a Shea is not. Um, but you ought to be able to easily cobble one of these together out of some Shea parts and everything. There's this thing, I have no idea what that is. I mean, it's a PV log hauler, um, but I mean, what a bizarre thing. And, and um, <laughs> looks very science fiction. I was gonna say, it looks like yeah. something uh, a rocket ship was uh, designed for. Was... Oh, what so, was that? Uh, it was in the Gazette, the Jewel. Snowblower. Oh right, yeah. The, the yeah, yeah, the the jewel, the rival to the um, the Leslie Rotary. Yeah, and they had they had the famous trials, um, eighteen eighty something in Colorado, and yeah. yeah, the jewel lost, but yeah, it had a it had a big screw, like a big auger, on the front. Um, yeah, it was the same kind of principle, but yeah. Wow. So anyway, that's that's pretty much it so that's the uh, that's the lombard and nicely done no oh, thank that's you terrific it really is well done al that's nice 